if you're dealing with a sloping site, at some time you're going to find the difficulty that your sites, let's just turn the topography levels on, The slope on the site means that from one end of the site to the other, particularly if you've got multiple buildings on the site or, or just a very, very large building, even though this might be the ground floor here and this the ground floor here, because of the difference in the terrain levels based on our terrain mesh, when we view those in 3D, They're worlds apart. So let's view that. We don't want our building up in the air, up in the sky like this. We want our ground floor to sit down at the ground floor. Now if I was to drag this down, I'm not sure what this is doing, let's make this zero. Yeah. If I was to drag this all the way down, we'd see that we're going about seven meters down, looking at the distance there, to be able to get this down to ground level. But also because this building is quite long, we can see that it's spanning over multiple contour lines. So if I was to grab the wall at the other end and do the same thing, this one is more like six meters. So there's about a meter difference just in this particular building. Now, how do we deal with that? In, in reality, in construction, we might bench a site or we might split a floor so we've got a split level. I just want to have a look at it in a more generic sense at the moment without worrying too much about that level of construction understanding. How do we get it down to the right floor? The first thing we need to understand is that just because it's called ground floor in terms of our story settings, it doesn't mean that we need to have all of the drawings that should be our ground floor on the same story. The way that we therefore deal with that is that we need to select all the elements that don't belong. I'm going to again turn off, like I did in the previous video, turn off this layer just so that's out of the way. I'll select all these walls. Let's try that again. going to cut this. So instead of placing my ground floor on the story called ground floor, I'm going to place it instead on the story that's called basement. Now this is going to work to a degree but not perfectly and we'll have a look at why. Based on our story settings, if I zoom out a little bit more, we see that we've got more building elements over here. So this is of a very large house and this is a secondary dwelling. If we look at the story settings of what we're talking about, then we can see that the basement height at a height of 179,000 is 3.3 meters lower than the story above ground floor. So if we then view this in 3D, we've lowered our walls, but we're still nowhere near low enough. Of course, I'll need to drop down the next one as well. So we'll take this first floor and drop it down here. So it's still not enough. So what, what are we going to do? We could drop it down another story, but if we look at those story settings, we don't have that available to us. The next story down is a long, long way down. So we might need to make it a second basement or we might need to change the way that these numbers work because at the end of the day, the name isn't important. All that matters is really an understanding of the story heights. So I could, to a degree, lower the levels of these walls. I could select these walls and I could say, I want these to be in the selection of the wall setting, but I also have a a slab here, so a, a smarter way of working rather than going into the wall settings and reducing the height here would just be to use the elevate tool. Where do we find that? Edit, move, elevate. So we can just add or subtract a height. So I could make this minus 1000. Sorry, I need to be a bit faster at that. Minus 1000. And that will drop it down a meter. Let's have a look just to see how that works. So we can see that we've again got a meter between our walls and our roof, but it's still 
not enough. We need to go down lower than that. So we're going to select our walls and go minus, we can see it's minus a meter. So now let's try that again. We're going to go minus 500, which will make that for a total of minus 1500. That's lower and they're still visible. We're going to get to a point depending on the height of the walls. So let's say not linked. My walls are currently 3,000 millimeters high. If we were to say we needed to lower that more, let's say we were to lower it another 1,500, so it's minus 3,000 in total now. Our walls are still showing, but they've instead of showing up as a solid black wall, they've now shown as a white outline. Why? Why are they doing that? And if I was to try to draw a door in my wall, we'd see that it's not showing. Now if I was to go into 3D, we'd see that that door is actually there. But what's happened is that our walls, and therefore our doors and windows, is now below our cut plane. It's below our cutting line. We're too low to be able to see it on this story. So we do have the ability in ARCHICAD to be able to reduce below our cutting plane, but only so much. If I bring that back up again, 1500, we now see that at 1500, and that's the, the height that I have it set at, but that's quite normal for ARCHICAD. If we're about 1500 below our cutting line or our home story zero, we're still going to see things. But if we go up too high, we're not. The other way of thinking about this, so in order to fix this, we're going to need to create a new story. In creating new stories, going to the story settings, I am never ever going to go insert below. That would be the smart way of working, but what I'm going to end up with if I do that is negative numbers, and that's just problematic. So I'm going to go insert above, and I'll call this second house. Again, the name doesn't mean much, but it's going to help me understand what it is I'm looking for. And in this case, I was originally setting my terrain height, which allowed me to put basement at the right height, which was 3,300. Let's forget about the 300 for now, just to keep it simple. And so we're going to make this 176. So I'm taking off 3,000. I can work this out later, but I'm going to show you why we're doing that. So I've added a new story, but I've taken away that total height. Sorry, this needs to be 3,000, and this one here needs to be 6. So now what I need to do is to select all of this, and again, like before, cut. And I'm going to place this down one story, which is now my story called Second House. The roof's going to be in the wrong position. We'll get back to that later. And we can see that we've now put this down in the ground. This is too low. Why? Because I didn't change it back so those walls were at the zero to this story. So let's do that now. We'll select all these walls, go into the setting, and make all of this zero. So I could do it again through elevate, or I could make this zero. Again, what I'll need to remember is when I change the setting of the wall, it won't necessarily change the settings of the slab, because walls and slabs are different objects. There used to be a tool in ARCHICAD uh, that allowed us to do that, but it's changed in this version. So that now brings it back up a meter and a half, and we see that we're now slightly out of the ground and slightly in the ground. Uh, but in this case, we're just going to be relying on cut and fill in order to be able to bench this whole house at a consistent level. Now let's just bring that roof down from the story above. And we'll just update the settings so that roof's not green anymore because it's starting to distress me. Let's try that again. Pick up settings of roof.
inject settings of roof. There we go. So now we have both houses, our primary house and our secondary dwelling. Uh, obviously the fences need a little bit of work to make them sit at the right height. Uh, but we've now got both buildings sitting on the ground where they need to, even though they're both supposed to be called ground floor, uh, but they're a long, long way apart, so roughly seven metres apart in their height based on the fact that they're sitting on a very large site.